If you live in one of New York City's five boroughs, you're probably well acquainted with public transportation, the good, the bad, and the ugly. In an attempt to take out the bad and the ugly, the Rockefeller Foundation is proposing New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio implement Bus Rapid Transit, also known by its acronym BRT. Described as a high-performance transit option, the idea was used briefly to connect Brooklyn and Manhattan after Superstorm Sandy disabled New York subways. And joining us now is the president of the Rockefeller Foundation, Dr. Judith Roden. Dr. Roden, welcome back to the show. Thanks. Great to be here. So, uh, Dr. Roden, what is BRT and why is it good for New York? Well, it's a high-performing bus route. It goes down a middle lane. It makes very few stops. It has dedicated traffic lights. People board from multiple doorways simultaneously. They don't buy a ticket on board. Um, or even use a pass on board. All of that is done at a wait stop. Um, and so it moves very quickly and very effectively. And it is absolutely critical for New York. It is. I said, it, this is kind of like what was used right after Super Soul and Sandy to get people from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Did you consider that something of a pilot program that worked? <laughs> Uh, it definitely worked. So they used a dedicated lane. It made no stops. It went right through. Of course, we're piloting in New York with a modest type of rapid transit, but they are not what we see around the world as gold standard BRT. The reason that New York needs it so desperately is the plight of the outer boroughs. About 750,000 New Yorkers commute more than an hour a day although we have the most extraordinary subway system in America, and it's so incredibly effective, mm -hmm. it isn't really equally effective throughout our five boroughs. Mm -hmm. Of those 750,000 people, the median income is $35,000. Mm -hmm. So it's affecting the more disadvantaged among us who then have these long commutes. Mm -hmm. It's bad for them, it's bad for businesses in the outer boroughs, and it can be quite easily fixed. And bus rapid transit, you argue, is good for the economy, and uh, it's good for for our crisis in, uh, in the price of housing. Explain Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, first of all, housing always comes where the best transit is, the best schools, the best transit, mm -hmm. the most commercial options. We at Rockefeller funded something called the walkability score. And we showed that the real estate prices are higher, where it's either more walkable to get to all these things or the transit is easiest. So building bus rapid transit, having these dedicated lanes, improving access in this way would really be a way to take off some of the pressure on our um, housing crisis. But it's much more than that. It is so economically feasible compared to what we're doing. So let me just give you one yeah, statistic. Please. The first phase of the Second Avenue subway is costing $3 billion a mile. Cleveland put in what they're calling the Cleveland Health Lane um, that goes past all of their medical centers and is linking people to jobs in these high-end uh, health uh, and technology centers, 30 million dollars a mile to build that. So it's built more quickly. You don't have to go underground. It's far cheaper. It's environmentally efficient because it uses, you know, very efficient either electric or um, alternative energy fuels. It's really a win-win. And then, of course, it doesn't go down like the subways uh. do in emergencies or storms. Well, what about the argument that some people make that it just adds to the congestion of the city by, you know, blocking off a whole lane of, of uh, traffic that would otherwise be used by cars. Well, that is what it's doing. Let's take Madison Avenue, which is the bus that, that I often take um, between my office and my home. So that is dedicated at bus lane, but it's on the outside. All of the gold standard bus rapid transit, which is what we're recommending, are middle median lanes. So often when we're talking about the outer boroughs, those medians are often there anyway. It would be converting them into a dedicated bus oh. lane mm -hmm. um, that really wouldn't or may take one lane away, but certainly wouldn't take away two lanes, one in each direction. Are you proposing specific bus routes? We funded the Pratt Center for Community Development. They did a very significant study, and they are recommending eight specific routes. I'll give you two examples. One is LaGuardia to the Rockaways, which also goes past Kennedy. 
First of all, there's so much job creation in airports, so it would link more opportunities for more people to get to the airport more effectively. Um, it's also obviously great for tourists uh, who might have it. Very important for the Rockaways, who, as we saw at Sandy, were wiped right. out in terms of yeah. their transit options. A second one that, to me, feels like a no-brainer is Staten Island through the Holland Tunnel into Manhattan. So really, the reliance on the Staten Island Ferry, you know, the problems that we're seeing over and over again, use a bus transit line. Um, could be extremely effective. And there are several others um, that are also being recommended. So it has been extremely carefully studied. Why is transportation such a big, important issue for the Rockefeller Foundation? We think that transportation is at its heart uh, about equity. People who need to get linked to good jobs don't all have equal opportunity to do that. And so having phenomenal low-cost, accessible transit. And it's one of the reasons that our subway system is so great. It's just not providing for the outer boroughs and even for some parts of Manhattan the kind of equitable access to job opportunities that we would really like to see. Well, Dr. Roden, thank you so much. Thank you.